Well, g'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, at long, long last, the Ariston, little record player, the one I rewound the transformer on. So if you want to go back to, oh, I don't know, six videos ago, eight videos ago, something like that, have a look at what I did to get this unit working. Now, we've got to pretty it up. And there we go. I've almost forgot what this looked like. Right. We've got to pretty it all up. Underneath, uh, a little bit greasy and dried grease on the turntable mechanism itself. Not that there's much on the mechanism, really. Um, our little mat is nice and pliable. And yeah, probably needs a little bit of cleaning up on the bearing, um, the idler bearing, the motor bearing, and an overall bit of a bit of a clean up with him. Now, you probably remember this fella. I can certainly remember that transformer rewinding the damn thing, but it does work. So I want to get this going in stereo to see how it all sounds. Lots and lots and lots of dried grease up in around here. I'll give you a closer picture when we're doing this. Uh, the pots, both the pots are dirty, a little bit dirty. Um, the rest of this doesn't look too bad. There's areas where some of the vinyl is actually lifting and we'll, yeah, glue that, glue that back down. On top, I'll um, probably bring his in a little bit there anyway. On top, nice and dirty. We've got to clean all this up, take these covers off um, and, and just clean the whole thing up. The other thing we have to do is our cartridge. Now, this is one of these um, little flip-over barrel type cartridges. There's no stylus on this side for LPs. It's only on this side for 78s. And, well, we have tried the 78 on a 45 record, and it does work, but, um, of course, it doesn't do your record a lot of good, the size of that needle. So, yeah, I think I've got some of these. The, um, just a little... Uh, styluses we'll we'll go into this fix him up uh what else have we got to do N not a lot on getting that going i'll just sit him up there and i don't know ah uh, a little rubber that that sits on on the corners he just sits on little rubbers, and obviously this fella is non-existent. Clean this out, and we've got a little bit of work to do on things like this. The other corners are not too bad. It's mostly that one that's broken and this one that's broken. Okay, so clean these fellas up, take them off, polish them, take these out, clean them up there are lots of um lots of dust and dirt inside those and i'm putting dirt everywhere here it's upside down clean these off polish them polish the um the handle um make sure all that works as it is so yeah just a little bit of cleaning up now for a start we will probably we'll start on on this because I want to be able to sit this unit when we get it uh, cleaned up and going into the main box itself. So okay, we'll um, we'll start by I think doing these corners get get this case a little bit better up to scratch and um, yeah we'll go from there. At last. We're back on this, and I promise you, soon we'll be back onto that Breville radio too. Okay, 
let's get on with it. Okay, well we've glued the glued the corners. Time to release our clamps and um, have a look how it come up. And I'm sure these won't uh, give any more problems. That's good, good, nice and solid. Everything is. Everything is nice and solid. Now, what we've got to do on the corners, um, heat, uh, put some put some uh, uh, spray glue or something like that, uh, just a little bit underneath there, and heat, just gently heat the vinyl and push him down and push him into place. So we have to do that. Oh, the rest of the corners aren't too bad. That one is starting, so, yeah, just... Get a little bit in there, peeling back, put some glue in there. And other than that, just clean him up. This one's the same there. And on that corner, that one's pretty good. Pretty good. We might just push him down a little bit into position. And, yeah, that one's good. And, of course, um put our vents in now uh, I'm just going to put it in but put a little bit of celastic on the other side uh, or hot glue we might use hot glue with these um, just to keep it in place we've got to put uh, new feet on the old feet uh, these fellas which is uh, 16 mil by 6 mil um, they're cracking and hard so I'll round up something similar to those. I didn't really want to put black ones on, which are, yeah, a dime a dozen. But anyway, well, I'll see what I can find. I didn't want to use the stick-on ones. I'd rather have uh, the original type with the screw in. So, um, yeah, that's where we're up to. Let's get the rest of this cleaned up.
Right, let's get into this little part of it. Now, I think uh, ease, uh, for ease of handling, I'm going to take the power cord out. And it's, it's only a matter of the three wires there. Take this out uh, because I'll be to and from on this board um, back and it'll be a lot easier without that. So let's get it off. Okay, I'll put this fella back in here so I know where things go back together. There's a bit of an unusual power supply, this one. Ah, oh, looks better. There we go. That is certainly a lot easier to handle without a without a power cable hanging around. Now, what I want to do, um, I think where I'm going to start is I'm going to take the arm off. I wasn't going to, but um, I need to get at the cartridge. Uh, yeah, I need to clean up all in around here underneath the arm itself. So, yeah, we, we've got to test the cartridge as well which I can do on uh, another amplifier I've got here before we do this one. So the other part of the, the arm that's got to be fixed up is this little switch and this, this little um, spigot here that comes around and opens and closes the switch for the motor. He's loose. I think it'll be a lot easier just to, yeah, just take the whole arm assembly off. Now, we've got one channel coming to here. I will take some photos of this. And the other channel being this little grey fella comes over here to the, um, well, right or left, whatever be the left side. Okay, so we'll remove those two then we can take the arm assembly totally out and yeah do what we've got to do with it Okay, well, this makes the job a fair bit easier, especially um, these are a little bit bent up and uh, I want to clean the contacts. Very easy to do that. And there's our cartridge. Now, I'm just not real sure what these are called, but um, let's see. Uh, it's a crystal. Um, gee, what's on, what's on there? I can't read that. C44, I think. But anyway, that's the cartridge. Takes one of these little needles that actually screws in one end. And um, yeah, it just sits there. But I'm not real sure whether this cartridge is working properly. We've got to connect him up and make sure that this side is working. This is the side for the 3345s. 
and um, yeah, that's the 78. Okay, so that's what we've got to do there. Otherwise, uh, take this, yeah, take some of the wiring out and just clean him up, get it, yeah, a little bit better than what it is. Now the rest of this, uh, what, I've, what I've got to do uh, on the rest, we'll do these one by one, is certainly clean this area up here, which is loaded with solid grease. I might put some alcohol on these screws and take this assembly off, maybe, because this is, that is gummed up, something terrible in there. The grease is, it's actually solid, and to turn it, yeah, very, very hard to turn. So I'd really like to take the motor assembly and um, the, the whole assembly here off. So I think we'll do that. Want to oil the motor, make sure he's right. Yes, he spins okay, but um, let's let's keep him that way. We'll just oil the bearings in him. So um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do this. Should be pretty straightforward. Two wires to the motor. A ground wire is already undone, and I put isopropyl alcohol on these to loosen well to soften the paint on the screws that's held it in position okay let's do that Okay, we'll have a look at this arm. Now, first of all, we'll get this fella out and take the cartridge out. There's probably no need to take the rest of the cables out. All those look okay. A little bit of a pinch there, but yeah, we'll check him out anyway. We've got one crossed, crossed cable and one shielded. Um, maybe one was replaced at some stage. But as we can see, we've got to get this screw out of here to um, put our, put our uh, new stylus in. So we'll get this fella out. And go from there. We've also got to clean this up once this is done. Okay, let's get you guys in a better position there. Okay, that's what we've got there. And as you can see, we've... Um, Oh no, yes, we do have um, this channel broken off. Now, obviously we've got markings on there. I don't know whether you can see them on this cartridge. I think we've got um, right and left written there. I don't think we can focus them there. Oh, you might be able to see that. And on the other side, there's nothing. So I'm gathering this would be the positive up the top here and the two negatives down below. This has been broken off. But we'll test this cartridge out anyway. So this is the right side 
there's a little R there. So obviously the red cable for the right side. Okay. I'll get him off. Take this filler off. We're going to re resolder him. Right. There he is. Okay. It's a crystal C44. Now that's what we were looking at last time. Obviously a crystal cartridge with um, fairly high output, probably in the order of um, 700 millivolts to um, probably seven to 900 actually, um, almost a volt output out of this. Right, we'll get this little fella out. And then hopefully I will find need to get a need a smaller screwdriver here. Hopefully we're going to find a um, a stylus for it. There we go. Just loosen him off. And he's off. Right, I'll go and see what I can find. And then we'll test him. I have a needle or a stylus, if you like to call them that. Yeah. This one, I think, fits. It is off another cartridge. I didn't have a new one here. But, well, pretty. We'll see if he works. I'm pretty sure that fits okay. Just screw him up. And yeah, all that, he all seems to fit okay. And that's an LP needle or Crystal, rock, whatever you want to call it. Bit of sapphire, I think, this one. It wouldn't be diamond, but it would be sapphire. Okay. So um, the easiest way of testing it is, is to have it on the cables. So I'll clean the arm up now. Just clean all this up and get it ready to, um, to go. And we'll... This fella's okay, but we'll fix this fella up, re uh, put his little connectors back on, and put the cartridge back in.
now we've got this all set up, I'll um, check the cartridge output, see if he works. As you just saw, I've rewired it. We'll put the new terminals on there, on that end, and we've got left and right down here. So we'll start with the right. Now you'll probably hear a little bit of hum in the background. I'm just using um, ordinary fly leads, jumper leads on uh, a phono input, and of course we're going to get hum. Okay, so we'll put that one on there. And we'll grab this one, and as you can as you can see, there's um, quite a quite a considerable amount of hum. And that to me sounds pretty damn good. Okay, we'll try the left side. Okay, put him on the left side. And as I said, this is a phono input just to uh, an amp up here that's got phono in. And we've got good output. All right, we'll, um, we'll leave it at that for now and move on to our next job. Right, well, the next place to start is the mechanism in itself. So, um, first of all, I think I'll drop the motor off this. That way we can get all the old grease off this, fix this, that, yeah. He's not real good, is he? Yeah, just lube this up. This little fella here, the idler arm, not too bad, but still needs pulling apart, oiling. The rubbers are good, the, the uh, grommets, there's no problems with them. Let's pull the motor off and we'll oil him up to start with. Okay, done. That's our ground wire on that one. And we'll just try and keep an eye on what goes where. Right, Let's see if he comes off. And yeah, jammed a little bit. Anyway, there he is. He spins okay, but um, I thought, well, a little bit of oil won't hurt. Very small motor. And um, the name on him. Oh, gee. What have we got there? There we go. I can't actually read that, but uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll do that. We'll come back to him. And this fella, it's two spaces here that holds the motor off the base plate. Two long screws. Right, now we'll get into this little mechanism here. I think first off, um, we'll take we'll take the whole thing apart, but we'll take this little arm off to start with. Okay. And sort of a little fibre washer there. Maybe to... Um, to hold a little bit of oil or oil impregnated and uh, makes it a little bit easier. And yeah, that's that needs cleaning. This fella on a little spring comes off, but um, this fella certainly needs doing. Very, very sticky and the grease has been there a long, long time. In actual fact, it's gone flaky if there's such a word oh jeez he come off in a rush a little eyelet goes inside the spring spring and a circlip now 
yeah, very, very sticky. There's also a little fiber washer, I think, on top of here. No, no, there's not. It's just all dried up grease. Okay, I'll be putting all this in a pot once I uh, get everything apart here and um, cleaning absolutely everything. This, yeah, just a little ball in there and a spring and um, that sets your positions as you're turning. But yeah, he's, he's pretty hard to turn. Righto, another, not a circlip is it? It's an e-clip. Those guys out there watching, I'm sure you'll correct me on some of this stuff. Okay, here we go. Now you can see the little ball on the spring. Right, get him out without losing him. And, yeah, that'll have to be cleaned up as well. So, yeah, let's, um, we're going to have to get this in some solution outside and clean him up. So I'll clean the bushes, clean the bush here, and get all this done and ready to put back together. So I'll come back very shortly when we're, Putting him back together. Right, I'm back and it's all cleaned up. All nicely cleaned up. That looks a bit nicer, doesn't it? So, a little bit of uh, grease around the place and oil, oil on uh, some of the shafts and um, yeah little bit of grease where this little ball runs around so we'll start with him now first of all we'll put a little bit of a smear of grease which we've got here graphite grease into our hole where the spring goes put the spring in right now we need a little bit of the the grease scattered around the outside here where the ball runs not a huge amount but um, certainly needs a little bit around this is um, just a, a light graphite grease should do the job fine now we'll set our little ball up on top here like so, and I think we'll tip this one over and how can I get this where you guys can see it? Okay, oh, and our little ball fell off. There we go. Okay. Now, oh, yep, no, before we put him in, Let's let's put a little. I'm just going to put some light grease in this area. That'd be fine, actually, rather than oil on this one. Right, let's push it in there. Right, and we push him up just a bit against the spring. I'll put it out the circlip on there. E clip, e clip that. Okay. Right. Now, this is why I've got this old rag here. It might look pretty yucky on camera, it, it does, but there's a lot of yuckiness happening here. Right, he runs around very nicely. 
nice and smooth. That's good. Now that fella goes on like so. The peg rises along the um, the little gear here, so it pushes in up and down. So need a little bit of a little bit of grease on on that fella. Because he is moving a bit. Okay. There we go. Spring. We've got our little eyelet that goes on top of the spring. Now on here, there was also a fibre washer. And then our e-clip. Right, and as you can see, as he goes around, now I can't get a screwdriver in there, but you can see what's happening there as he goes around for different speeds and goes to the off position. Okay, now around here, we'll certainly need some grease. I'm putting a different sort of grease here, some white molly grease. And we'll put it around here. Why? Because it uh, it sticks on here. It won't move anywhere. And very good at lubricating plastics. This is plastic. So, yeah. That's why I'm using him. That's plenty. Probably more than enough. And yeah, that's what I'm using there. Okay, so it's just a, uh, a plastic base grease. So we'll spin him around and he just rides around on that grease. This little fella and he goes in here like this. The spring goes across on here. And that's for our idler wheel. A little bit of grease on him. There is no washer on this one. We'll put our spring back on the little peg over here. Certainly a little bit different to what it was. We can't put this on because we had to take this off to get the mechanism out of the case. So we do that fella a little bit later on. We also have these screws that uh, they go down here, don't they? Like so, and then we put our spacers on them, and the motor sits on those. Okay, so we'll do them shortly. This little fella. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil. He's quite free. A little bit of oil on the bearing there and on just on the back bearing, just to uh, make sure he's lubed up. And for this, I'm just using Singer oil, bite oil, sewing machine oil, and just a little bit in around him there. Lovely. Same at the back, let's try and get a little bit on the shaft, which we have got there, a little bit of spill. Okay, that's the motor done, it's putting back in. Now our ground wire was over there on that side, so this side only has a spring washer. And a nut. This one is our ground connection, spring washer, and nut. There we are. 
there's our assembly ready to put back in. All working lovely. A little bit different to what it was. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Okay, we've been cleaned up pretty well. That, that come up, yeah, pretty pretty nice actually. So, time for the mechanism to go back in, and we've got one little screw that goes in there, a, a little Phillips screw, and the rest are uh, washers and nuts. Might be easier with the spacers to put them in the grommets to start with. Especially that one. Go. And that fella, yeah, pushes down like so. This is our little screw that goes in that one. I don't know why he's different, why he doesn't have uh, a little belt coming up from underneath. But anyway, that's the way it is. Just tighten him up. Just uh, not, don't over tighten these when you're doing them. The little bolts, they're not designed to be real tight as long as they hold. Right, so there's our mechanism back in. Got to wire it across, and uh, yeah. All looks pretty good there. Next fella, we'll put our idler wheel on. Now I'm just going to put a slight dab of oil on that fella. And that'll do us. Just a little dab. An e clip on there. Next thing, um, these fellas on the arm assembly. That's the next job, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's getting closer. We'll put the arm back in, wire the pots back in directly to the arm where they were, and then we'll start setting up the switch on the back of the arm so, um, so we can turn the power on and off to the motor via the red lead. Okay, so the blue lead and the red lead go to the switch and the power actually goes to the switch. So, yeah, you'll see what I mean. Both these are switched. Okay, all right, we'll get on with it. Right, so we've got our grey lead on here, which is, yeah, now um, live and neutral goes here to the switch. Now this switch um, is switching the motor on and off, okay, via the little switch assembly here on the bottom of the arm. So blue lead over to the switch, red lead to the motor. In case you guys have got one of these apart or you don't know how it's been wired, well, this may help someone out there. Okay, let's get this arm in and a couple of other knickknacks on the front. Right, now before we go any further, we'll give these contacts a little bit of a clean up. 
and straighten him out straight there. Not actually meant to be on an angle like that, I don't think. Just lightly sandpaper. I've got a, a little bit of uh, 1200 wet and dry that I'm using. Okay, that looks good. Now, I'll straighten him out. Just a little bit, because he's still got to, he's still got to be on a little bit of an angle. That's a little bit better, because of the arm, the arm is a, a, across here, and this is, yeah, slightly offset, so it's still on an angle. Let's put a multimeter on him and make sure he's right. That's pretty good. Yep, that's good. Okay, let's get him in. Okay, put this wire on here. I've got the red one on. And I forgot to press my foot switch on the recording. Anyway, you didn't miss much. Me soldering the wire on. And we've got to put our little lever on here. This lever, I've got to look into this to see how it actually, how it actually works. It, it's very loose on the shaft, and I don't think it should be. Um, the, the arm can slide on the shaft, but we really, when the shaft moves around, we really want the shaft to disengage the switch. Okay, I'm back from the pictures, and yes, you guys would know, of course, our power cord comes in through here, and this holds the power cord, which brings me to our little spigot I was talking about it goes over the other side here uh, at the front so yeah we'll um, we'll put him in there later all right well we're not going to put the power cord in just yet until um, until we're sort of finished here this fella sits in here like so and yeah that's where our little adapter goes if we've got a a large centre 45. And this little fella goes in here. There. Now our arm is still very loose there, but there's, I mean, that's the way of it. There's... Not much you can do here. It's the way it's designed there. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm sure he'll be okay. Okay. I've got this little fella doing his thing. Now, well, he's the right way up. We bring our arm back. He... It's the switch. Oh, sorry, we bring it. It's the switch and opens in there. The trouble is, this keeps slipping. There's something, something in this arm here. I think I'll have to take this pin out. There's something on the arm that's not right. It's it's slipping badly. On this, I can put that there, but then the arm does it does push that fella. But oh, gee, the arm is actually slipping on this little assembly in here. I think something. Something's not right here. I might slip this pin out, uh, slip the spring off and, and the pin out and 
try and find out what's going on. Right, guys, I the whole arm assembly appears to be reasonably loose. It's not right at all. I'm nearly thinking there should be a little rubber washer in the middle there to hold all this and make this grip a little bit better. Yes, it will give way. It won't break it if there's pressure put on it. But really, um, at the moment, it, it's, it's just not turning this fella up here when he turns. And this should not be like that. Yeah, that just should not be like it. This little arm here, the little bracket, the U-bracket, is also, uh, you've got movement on the arm backwards and forwards, and I don't think there should be that much movement. I mean, this is a tone arm. Okay, let's get this out. Now, this thing here, Maybe that fella's bent in and he's not getting enough spring tension. If you give it more spring tension, does it turn? Not really. It's still slipping. Okay. I won't bore you with these details. I'll, um, I'll try and find out what's going on here and come back to you shortly. Well, after a long and tedious exercise... I'm back to square one. Yes, I took the arm out, <laughs> unsolded the leads again, and uh, it was the easiest way to work on this thing. So now, going to find out what is going on here. Now, has the back of the arm been hit? I don't think so. I think that's fine. We've got the arm fitting in sideways, pretty good there. That's that's very good. Not really worn much, but now we have this arrangement here, whereas that's the arm, and it's got to turn this fella. Now, it's relying on the spring to more or less pull it, but it's... Of course, it's not engaging. So, what goes in here between these two? Is it a spring? Is it, like, what is it? I don't quite understand what it would be. Maybe, is there a spring on top? Not really, there was nothing in there. If there was a spring there that pushed down on this, yeah, that would make it turn a little bit better. But there was nothing in there. Is it missing? Okay. Let's take our wires out. We can put these in when we work this out. What do you think, guys? And that's very, very loose. That shouldn't be that loose in there. So what is missing from in here? It's no use in leaving you guys hanging on this one. Um, gee, comments would be welcome, like right now. I wish I had a live stream. But, um, yeah. And as you can see, in there, that should not be like that. We've got to fix this up. How do we fix it? What do we do there? What is missing? Something's been broken out, probably, or um, some sort of rubber O-ring or something, but uh, the O-ring won't centre this, 
It's almost as um, there's a complete part missing. That has been, I don't know whether it's ever been taken off. I don't think so. But if it hasn't, it may have to be taken off and something fixed up with this. All right, um, let me think about this for a while. This might um, hold us up a little bit on this one. And um, I'll get back to you soon. Okay, guys, to get this going, or going properly, the only way I can see, I, I don't have the information on this, is to position this in the centre and solder the washer to the actual U-bracket here, just at the front of it, and possibly just a little dab at the back. But just solder him on there, and when he goes in, everything will be nice and tight. Now, this can still turn 360 degrees, this little red... This little red fella here, he can uh, actually turn either way on that switch, and it doesn't hurt the switch, it can go either way. So if you go past it, you can go back. The only thing is, if you turn your arm around and around and around, it'll end up twisting your cables and breaking the cables. But that would be misuse. So, yeah, I don't think anyone with this particular little record player is going to do anything like that. So I'm thinking uh, to eliminate this problem, obviously I would say there's some sort of ferrule, uh, probably a plastic ferrule or something goes in here. And yeah, it just um, holds the whole thing in the centre. So that's the only way I can see out. So I'm going to give that a go and make sure it's all okay. The spring tension, I don't know whether that's uh, the correct tension or not, but I suppose that's a way of adjusting it. You pull it back to increase the, sp well, lighten the spring tension, which lightens the needle. How does that look, guys? I'll get a um, little bit cleaner, clean the flux off him, and I think he looks all right. And for my cleaner, I just use methylated spirits, okay? So I don't use anything fancy. I know there's better cleaners, but, yeah, don't worry about them. Well, that looks pretty good, actually. That's um, what's going to do the job. And, yeah. That, okay, so that should do the job a lot better than, yeah, what was on there. At least it's going to turn everything. Now, this fella has to be swaged a little bit little bit more just to get him tight on the washer. That's fairly tight, but um, I'll put a punch in there and just do just a little bit more to him. Okay, I'm just using a hole punch and putting him down inside there and just tap him just lightly and a little bit more.
and that's lovely. Nice and tight. Didn't hurt anything else. Everything else is good. He's nice and tight. He will turn with the arm. Okay. Let's put some of it together and see what it looks like. Now, I'll tell you what, that is nice and firm. That is great. That will, I reckon that fixed the whole thing. A little bit of solar. Not quite the appropriate way of probably fixing a vintage unit, but, uh, well, it worked. And we'll start this process all over again. These wires should just about put themselves on. Okay. Here we go. It always pays to, uh, when you're doing things like this, don't forget to feed the wires in first. Yes, I've made that mistake many, many, many times. Now, if we put, we'll start this fellow over pointing that way. And push him on. Uh, get my pliers. Push him on. Okay. Now, if we do that, he has to and sit the arm there, that has to be open. So you've got to come around until he opens the switch. About there. Okay, yeah. That is opening and closing the switch. Yep, that's working nicely. Right, one problem fixed, and the arm is actually really nice and tight, doesn't move around. Right, <laughs> I'm not gonna bore you with this. I'm wiring these up again. Here we go again. Okay, back soon. Okay, they're all wired up. Everything's done. We'll put the valves in. And um, I'm getting ready to put him back in the case. So now we'll go back to the case and we'll put our little fittings on, our hinges, uh, the little clips at the front, and get it ready. And we'll basically, once we do that, it's sort of ready to... Um, Put our platter on and see if it makes a noise. Okay, let's do the case. a little bit there. Yeah, I'll investigate that. 
Looks all right in, in on this side. I think the next job is put the valves in the unit, put the power cord in, and sit him in there, and hopefully it should fire up if I've done everything correctly. Now guys, have we got the wiring correct? 240. Comes to the switch, through the switch, over to the transformer and to the live of the motor. Out of the transformer, over to our black, which is our neutral. So our transformer's got active and neutral. And yeah, we haven't touched any of the wiring there. The other uh, neutral of the motor goes over to the power neutral. Now, when we fire this up, um, we'll um, we'll put it through the dim bulb as well, just in case I've made any mistakes there. But all looks okay. Everything looks right. It's time. We'll sit him in here. Like so. Starting to look like a record player, isn't it? Okay, let's get our platter. A little bit of grease in there, and then it's time. Okay, just using some light grease on this fella. Very light grease. Okay. Look at that. Hello right, guys, I've got the um, Variac over here on 240, uh, 230 volts, 240 volts. We've got uh, the dim bulb here, which you can see over in the corner here. Let's turn him on. And bright, dimming off. And I hear a little bit of noise coming. Okay, we've got a little bit of noise. Let's see if this bit works. Yes, 33, 45, 78 and off okay now for the tricky bit okay right right hand side we have audio turn him down okay what have we got here right yes Turn him down, left. We have audio, guys, both channels. Righto. You know what happens now? He's drawing uh, 29 watts, which is probably about right. We can put the arm over here. Now, if we put this on... 45 RPM and he stops. 
So our switch is working nicely. Okay, it's time. Uh, yeah, but we have a little bit of, uh, a little bit, a little bit of um, Buddy Holly and the Crickets, and that'll be the day. Let's try this. Let's see if this actually works. Just... Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. Yes, that'll be the day when you. Man, we better not play too much of that. But as you can hear, left sound, left side sounds really good. And right sound sounds fantastic. Right side sounds. And we certainly don't want any YouTube strikes. So there we go, guys. She's working. Everything's working. We can actually put the screws in these fellas and put this thing together. And the arm is working nicely. We can um, put him over there. He stops. Everything is, yeah, looking uh, well. Check the other side. And yeah, sounds sounds great. Sounds really good. It's very loud. It is certainly not distorted, even though my little mic may not pick it up real well in here. It's um, yeah. It's not real good. So there we go. I guess we can check RPM on our turntable and see what he's doing. Let's uh, let's do that before we finish the video. And what have we got? We got audio and RPM. Okay, I'll give you guys a bit of a, a bit of a look on this to see what we can come up with as far as speed is concerned. So we'll go to 33 to start with. We'll start. And yeah, a little bit fast. Not much we can do about that. 35, not the best result, I'd like 33, but there we go, 35.47, hmm, it's 6% uh, high, which is um, not the optimum result that we want. But, I mean, what can you do? It's a 240-volt motor, and there's not much I can do to slow this little baby down. We'll try 45. And around about the same, 46, yeah, 46.5, 46.6. And we're getting a reading... And there we go. And we're looking at 46.88, which is 4% high. Mm, a little bit better, but not much. Okay, let's crank it up to 78 and see what we can do. Oh, okay, we're right on the 78. Oh, 79 there, I can see 79. So, yeah, a little bit. Mm, still a little bit quick, but as I said, not much we can do, and it sounds great. So there we go, seventy nine point oh eight, and it's uh, one percent. 
my stupid camera, it's one 1.3% high. Okay, so there we go. A little bit high on the RPM, but I don't know. I played, that'll be the day, and that sounded damn good in here, I'll tell you. It sounds fantastic. Righto, guys, this is it. We'll finish this one up. I will eventually round up some little feet, new feet for him. And, um, yeah, I think we can call this one a wrap. Okay, so if you like what I'm doing, please remember to like and subscribe. Please subscribe. Hit the bell and you'll be notified when the next video comes up. Okay. Until then, bye for now.